Hey everybody, today I'm reviewing Obris Morgan's newest model for 2014, the Predata. Let's get started. You can see the packaging, it comes in a nice plastic uh, pelican style case. It's a forest green kind of color. It's got a uh, screw down valve here on the front. It's got metal hinge pins in the back and uh, metal hinge pins for the two locking uh, clasp things here. <laughs> uh, on the top also it has a little label just saying uh, Obers Morgan, the Predata automatic high beat, uh, 1,000 foot. So you open it up, and you have your paperwork. First is the uh, instruction manual, little bifold here. Uh, it has watch care. It's got a little diagram of the different components of the watch, specifications, and how to work the crown for time and date, etc. And the other one, right here, uh, is the warranty information. You can see I haven't filled mine out yet. And you get a little warranty card there, and info about you know what's covered and all that. Let's put those aside for now. You can see here the case is quite nice actually. It's got a uh, molded out little uh, slots for all the different pieces. It has a foam lined top, and it has a rubber gasket inside the lid that meets with the main case has a little lip on it so it should seal pretty well uh, which is, the watch itself of course is already 300 meter water resistant but you know it could be used for uh, other things or something like that if you so desired these are my extra links here on the side along with the watch itself you get a spare screw bar which is how you attach the bracelet to the case you get a number 200 flathead screwdriver and you get the included NATO strap uh, this comes with a desert strap good quality strap nice thick weave uh, no sharp edges anywhere nice thick blasted stainless steel rings there uh, good quality we'll talk a little bit more about that later and uh, some input I had on that so let's get to the watch itself. It comes on a little foam pillow here, you can see. I cut this down so that it would fit with my resized bracelet and I could still put it in the case. You can see that. Let's put that aside. And this is the Predata. The Predata comes in a few different uh, model variations. You can get it brushed, blasted, or PVD black coated. And along with those combinations, you can get it with a black dial or a blue dial. Uh, the black dial comes with C1 Super Luminova, as you can see here, which is a white, white in daylight. And the blue dial comes with C3 Super Luminova, which is greenish in uh, daylight. Along with those options, you can get unpainted or painted hands and orange or yellow font, which is on the dial. You can see it underneath the minute hand there, and on the seconds hand. So, you got a lot of options. I think that total variations on their site is, you know, 15, 20, somewhere around there. This is actually a one-off kind of thing, uh, as far as I'm aware. What I wanted was painted hands with the orange font set on the brushed case uh, and bracelet. And you can see that's what I got. But I had to contact them and ask them for it. Uh, I said, you know, I, like, I really like this combination. Can you do that for me? Can I get the hands switched out? And they said, oh, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, just put it in your PayPal notes and we'll take care of it. And I also asked for a black NATO strap and they said that's no problem as well. And so I put that in there and they shipped it out and I uh, got it exactly how I asked for. No extra charge or anything. So that's very nice. Uh, Obers Morgan customer service has been very good every time I talk to them. They're a Hong Kong based brand which turns some people off but the quality quality is there especially for the price. Uh, what you get for the dollars you pay is pretty, you know, very good, very competitive. I'm not aware of very many other manufacturers that deliver that price to value. Uh, anyway, let's look at the case here. This is a 43 millimeter case, not including the crown and crown guard, with a 44 millimeter bezel. So if you look, it actually sticks out a little bit over the case. That helps you get a really nice, good, positive grip on the bezel, which already has very nice, thick, 
Oh, let me get it to focus. Very nice thick teeth there. Uh, not sharp, but very nice positive grip. So, uh, very smooth bezel. It's a little bit too smooth, actually, in my opinion. I would have liked a little bit more of a positive action. It will slip on you sometimes if you bump it against something. You can see I'm just moving it there with one with my thumb, no problem. So I would not use this for actual diving, but for a desk diver like me, where I'm timing something in the oven or timing how long it takes me to uh, get to work, etc., uh, it's it's no problem at all. That's fine. The lug to lug uh, width or length here is 52.6 millimeters. Lug width and bracelet size is 22 millimeters. You can see the uh, end links there blend in with the case very well this is a five link bracelet it has solid end links and solid links it's brushed on the sides and the inside as well you can see the solid end links right there all of it fits very well this bracelet is great um, very nice uh, you know curvy bracelet fits to the curvature of your wrist very well very comfortable. It's 22 millimeters, so it is large, and you will notice the size a little bit, at least I do, but I don't mind it, and the, the flexibility of the bracelet makes up for it with comfort. Nice matching stainless steel clasp here. It's a double action clasp. Pop that open and then push the buttons on the other side, and it opens up. There you can see the milled hinge. Uh, milled versus stamped is a little bit better quality, thicker, heavier. Uh, stronger. This has a little bit less play too. A stamped hinge is lower cost, and you'll see that on maybe you know a, uh, a low price Invicta or whatever. Um, this is just a little bit higher cost, a little bit better quality. Let's look at the case back here. The case back is very nice on the Obers Morgan. Uh, they really stepped it up from the Explorer. You can see the nice thick etching. I don't know if you can hear me run my fingers over it. But uh, it's nice, thick, deep etching. You can read very easy. Perdata Automatic over there. Uh, let me bring in the Explorer real quick. The Explorer is their previous model from 2013, uh, which they're planning to update for 14 as well, actually, by the way. But you can see the difference in etching quality here between the two. This, this is the blasted model, so the contrast isn't quite as high anyway. But actual depth of the etching is definitely shallower. So they really stepped that up with the Perdata, which is nice to see. And I'm going to refer, refer back to the uh, Explorer occasionally throughout this video just to compare and contrast some things between the two that I've noticed that I kind of see as improvements from Obers Morgan. Anyway, so that's the case back. It's a screw down case back by the way. Uh, very nice thick case back and that matches the thick sapphire crystal three and a half millimeters on the front sapphire crystal with AR coating which helps to give this watch a 300 meter water resistant water resistance sorry uh, the sapphire crystal in case uh, in case anyone doesn't know sapphire is uh, hardness matches uh, sorry uh, the hardest of sapphire is bested only by diamond to my uh, awareness so it's pretty much scratch proof for all intents and purposes not shatterproof so be aware of that but um, you can bump this against you know, concrete or whatever. I took my keys and rubbed it on the front. No problem, no scratches whatsoever. Uh, so that's great to see, it's really nice. That's one of the big uh, parts of what gives this watch its value, as well as the Explorer. That's another thing that they improve with the Perdata is this, this crystal is noticeably thicker. I don't know the exact uh, thickness of the Explorer crystal, but the Perdata is definitely thicker at three and a half millimeters. The AR coating seems to be a little bit better too in my opinion. You can see the difference there. More reflections on the Explorer. Anyway, this has a screw down crown as well. You can see the nice etching there. Laser etching on the crown. Nice positive grip on the crown. Smooth threads. And the lugs here I wanted to point out as well. Very nice uh, sharp milling and everything. Nice lines on the lugs. Not sharp that, you know, I mean like cut you sharp, but very nice clean lines that are well defined and everything. No, uh, no machining errors anywhere. Vertical brushing on the sides of the case. Very nice. Some have said that this looks more like a, a utility, tooly kind of look to this watch, and I'll give them that. I, I agree. But uh, I kind of like it. It's a little different with the unfinished bezel. 
There's no, you know, there's no painting on it or anything. The only loom on the bezel is the 12 o'clock loom pip. So, uh, I like it though. It's a, uh, it's a good look. I think that it would look really tooly if it was blasted like my Obris Morgan. Uh, sorry, my, <laughs> my Explorer. But the brush gives it a little bit nicer uh, feel. Let's look at the dial here. This is a black, glossy black dial. You can see it's shining there on the dial with, again, C1 Superluminova. So that's another thing that they've stepped up. Uh, with the Explorer, there was a lot of negative feedback about the loom. The loom was rather underwhelming. Even though it's Superluminova, it's very flat, not much loom on the dial. With the Predata, let me see if I can get a decent picture of the loom here. Uh, it's hard to tell, but there's, uh, there's loom is actually mounted you know, piled up on the dial, there's visible uh, raised parts there. You can see it at uh, 10 o'clock there on the dial, maybe, a little bit. Anyway, uh, there's a lot better loom on the Predata, uh, at least twice as good as the Explorer. So they really stepped that up, and that's really good to see. You can see it's got uh, just, you know, bar and stick uh, indices here. It's got double bars at... 12 and 6, and it took me a while to figure out what this little one was at 12 o'clock, but that's actually, at night, you can see which way is 12 o'clock, regardless of how it's oriented right away. You can see that extra little dot there. So that way your bezel can be anywhere you want, and you can still, still tell where 12 o'clock is easily. The writing on the dial says Obris Morgan uh, Mechanical, and Predata 300 meters. Let me show you how to use the crown here. Oh, and date o'clock, date at uh, four fifteen, right there. It's white background with black font. So this is a screw down crown. To use it, you have to unscrew it counterclockwise until it pops out. The first position when it pops out is actually to wind the movement. So you can turn it clockwise, and you'll wind up the movement, which is very nice to have. So you don't have to sit here and try to wind it manually like that. Uh, Pop it out one more. Whoops, that was two. <laughs> Pop it out one more. And now you can change your date. See there? Pop it out to the final position and you can change your time. So that's that. And then always make sure to screw it back in. Otherwise, your water resistance is essentially zero. So it's important that you screw that in, get it nice and tightly sealed. The Obris Morgan uses a Miyota 9015 movement. That's a 28,800 beat per hour movement, so it's a high beat movement. Uh, well, I don't know if you call it a high beat movement per se, but very nice, smooth, sweeping seconds hand. Uh, it's ticking eight times per second, so you get a very nice sweep there, you can see. That's the same speed as a Rolex would be, or a you know an Omega, uh, etc. Um, very nice uh, sweeping seconds hand. For those of you that don't know, a mechanical movement, there is no battery. Uh, the power for the watch is just by a, is by a spring. So when you're winding this crown or just wearing the watch, there's a weight inside that spins around and uh, that charges up a spring. It winds the spring tighter and tighter. And to get rid of that power and make the watch run, there's a balance wheel, an escapement and it just ticks back and forth like this. Each time it goes back and forth is one hertz. So it does that four times a second. So each time it goes like this, it ticks the second hand, goes back, ticks again. And it does that eight times per second. So you get eight ticks. And that's actually a effect of the spring unwinding is what you have there. So it's very interesting, and uh, I personally really like mechanical watch, and most higher-end watches are mechanical. It's just cool to have something, you know, actually ticking almost like alive on your wrist, beating. Um, and the craftsmanship is, you know, there's a lot more to, uh, to work on with finishing and all that. You can't see this movement, and it's just a standard, you know, undecorated uh, 9015, but it's been very, very accurate. I am plus three seconds per day on this movement, which is great for a uh, automatic. Well within the plus or minus ten seconds that Obers Morgan states for the Predata. 
All right, I'm here with the Predata, and I also brought along the Explorer just to compare and contrast between the two. I've been uh, charging them up, going back and forth with my XML flashlight for about a minute or two now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this light off, and we're going to see uh, how the loom performs. Here we go. So once the camera adjusts here, you can see uh, both nice and bright right off the bat. I do want to point out that this camera is not that great in low light. This is just a point and shoot that I'm using today, so unfortunately it's a little bit dimmer on screen. But right away you can see the very big difference between the two. Uh, Predata is on the right and Explorer is on the left. And you can see on the left with the Explorer all the hour markers have already pretty much disappeared from view in the camera. In real life they're definitely still visible but uh, you can tell the difference between the two because on camera the Predata is still completely visible. All the hour markers. And in real life I'd say they're probably three or four times as bright right now. The actual hands on the two are about neck and neck, but uh, that extra loom that they put on the dial really helped a lot this time around with the Predata. In use, I would say that the Predata is, you know, it's still quite visible hours into use. Um, I've never actually checked it like early in the morning when it's still dark, but I'm pretty confident it would still be visible. Um, it's really good loom this time around. So really happy to see that Obris Morgan, you know, stepped it up and listened to their customers and some of the negative feedback with the Explorer and put that into the Predata in a constructive way and really bumped up the loom making it more useful as you know that classic diver style loom dial so very nice to see so let's go ahead and turn the lights back on and uh, we'll just give a few closing comments and we'll be done all right we got the lights back on I uh, just want to mention a few closing things first off Obers Morgan's customer service Every time that I've dealt with Obris Morgan, they've been great. They've always answered my questions promptly and, you know, satisfactorily. They've just, you know, they really seem to care about their customer a lot. Uh, I've dealt with a few different people, and every time I've been very satisfied. Earlier on, I mentioned one of the things that I asked for when I ordered the watch was a black NATO strap. They said that was fine. They said just put it in the order, and we'll ship one out instead of the desert. Well, when I got the package... They did do my custom handset like I asked for, but they also uh, mistakenly shipped the desert strap anyway. So after a few days, I emailed them and uh, asked, you know, hey, uh, I mentioned the black strap. Would it be possible for me to, you know, either get one of those sent out or else I'll even, I'll pay for it at a discounted price. And they said, oh, that's fine. That was our mistake. We'll send one out next business day. And so they did. And you can see here I got my uh, black NATO as well. So now I have two straps. And they sent this out completely free of charge. They said, you know, we're sorry for uh, our error. And that was that. So just, again, very good customer service from Obers Morgan. That's part of what you pay for when you buy a watch is the customer service. Some brands, I'm not going to mention any uh, manufacturers specifically, but they will, you know, not really stand by their products so much as it's another way to make some money off of you in a way almost. They charge you. You have to ship it to you have to pay to ship it to them, and then they charge you a fee just to look at the watch and all that. So that's not really very good customer service. Uh, Obers Morgan has done everything they can to make me happy, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm completely satisfied. Also, I wanted to mention I don't get any support from Obers Morgan or anything like that. This is my own watch that I paid for with my money. Same with my uh, Explorer over here. Uh, you know, I bought both of those with my own money. This is just a brand that I have uh, enjoyed owning and I wanted to uh, share it with you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed the review and uh, I'll put up some pics. I'll show you a strap, uh, the NATO straps on it. And uh, that's that. So thanks a lot for watching.